Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. I am so excited. I don't even really know where to start. So I am going to just walk right into it all about this tiny entryway that I have here in the front of my home. Let's jump straight into it. So I'm gonna be replacing the trim. I actually ripped the trim off of this one door uh, a while ago <laughs> while I did the shiplap on this wall. And the reason why I didn't replace it is because um, the door frame for this door got damaged. We sold a couch a while ago and when they were taking the couch out from the downstairs, they actually broke my door frame. So I'm going to try to repair that in some way. It may just, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna cover it up with trim. That's my, gonna be my plan until I can figure out an actual solution for the door frame. So brand new door frame, brand new trim around the doors, trim around the flooring, and I'm excited. It's gonna make it so pretty in here. Painting both of the doors. It's going to be that dark gray that I painted the outside. This was a sad attempt at painting the door because it was bright red and I absolutely hated it. It was bright red on the outside and white and filthy on the inside. So I'm gonna be painting it that Iron Ore by Sherwin-Williams using door paint. And I tried chalk paint as an experiment and it really, it really didn't work. It has scratched off in pretty much all the places. So door paint it is. I woke up this morning and decided I want to rip some stuff out. And that is how I'm going to start this project. Let's basically rip out this trim and get rid of all this stuff so that we can put in some new trim and possibly paint the doors today. So the first thing that has to go is the mirror and that, and then I'm gonna have to get a hammer and get to work on removing all of this trim, so. that's done. My plan is to get the trim up first and then work on the faux brick. I gotta sort of remember how I did all of this and go outside and start cutting some wood. <laughs> okay, I built my header like these and I actually did an entire video on how I make my door framing and how I use really cheap wood to get an inexpensive but beautiful farmhouse trim. And I will link both of those videos up here if you haven't seen them and would like to know that information because it's actually really simple. It's how I'm gonna be replacing the trim in all of my house. Now I'm going to try my best to install it myself. Okay, for side trim, this is, I had to account for the strike on the door, so I just sanded it down some right there. And these I worked on a little bit by the hinges, but I'm gonna have to do more. So I marked the places where the hinges are, and I'm gonna have to go in and sand it down more. But this one I think can be installed. Oh Lord, for these hinges for the door. I guess that's what I'm gonna be doing for today. Gotta go let my battery charge. But what I didn't show in this video is all of the sanding and the multiple cuts that had to be made. I didn't show it. So don't think that this project took me like an hour. It's, I've been working on it all day. So just so you don't get like, oh, she does it so quickly. I don't understand why it takes me so long. No, it takes me a long time. I'm just not showing that all. So I didn't show you all of the sanding and there's a lot of sanding to be done in each one of these pieces before I can even get it up on the wall or the ripping things down on a table saw to use scrap wood to make some of this stuff. It's a lot of a process, but I did, I'm not gonna have to spend a penny on the wood, so it's worth it. So I have literally gotten no work done on this today yet. Um, I've been doing all the things that a normal homemaker does. So cleaning, cooking, shopping, dealing with interruptions. There's about to be another one. 
So I still have this one board left to go outside and sand. So I'm hoping to get that done and then I will probably be sanding, cleaning, and painting these doors into the night tonight to try to get them finished. Okay, I got that last board in place. So now I'm going to grab a bucket and I'm gonna start cleaning the doors and prepping them for paint. I want it to be done, like one and done, so. very much left so we shall see one coat it says one coat coverage guaranteed so let's see if I have enough to get both doors with one coat it would be amazing it's definitely not one coat coverage on the white part so i'm gonna have to come back in a second time with that i'm not holding out very much hope that i'm gonna get one coat coverage on this door <laughs> that is all white we shall see but it looks like i have quite enough paint so hopefully okay now to let that coat dry and then we'll come in. I think I have enough for a second coat for both of them so that's good. I really didn't want to have to buy any more <laughs> paint. This uh, single quart was about $25 so I did not want to have to go and buy another one and in case you are wondering this is Iron Ore by Sherwin-Williams and it's a door paint so yep okay let's let this dry. I'm pretty impressed. I think they look amazing. They might need a couple of touch-ups here and there. And I forgot about the fact that this has white lines in it, but I don't care. I still think it looks better dark and it'll definitely stay cleaner dark. So that's a an added bonus. Wall treatment. You might say, well, why don't I just carry over the shiplap? And maybe that would have been an easier choice, but I feel like I wanna try something new. And I've had this idea since uh, finding out about this ingenious project from a friend of mine to use joint compound and painter's tape to create my own faux brick wall. So that's what I'm gonna be trying in this space. That's my plan for the moment, is I'll be making this wall and this wall faux brick using joint compound. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Follow along for that video. We're gonna see how that turns out. So today we're working on the wall treatment, which is going to be a interesting process. I've never done it before, but I'm excited to try it. I have a friend that actually did this for her backsplash in her kitchen. We're going to make faux brick using joint compound and painter's tape. I went on to Home Depot and I looked up some of those faux bricks that are for backsplashes or for, they're basically tiles, so you can use them pretty much anywhere. And the size was like seven and a quarter, I think, or seven and a half by two and three quarters. So that's what I made a little template here for myself. And this is gonna be kind of my gauge.
right, look how far I am. Getting done. I'm almost halfway done, about. <sighs> Now to start at the top, and my battery is dying, so perfect time to switch. Woohoo! I'm gonna use the word organic when describing this wall. It was very organic. I just let it kind of come to me <laughs> because these lines are definitely getting sloppier than the other ones. And guess what? I'm okay with it. I really don't honestly think that you'll notice once it's all done. So we shall see. All right, I am ready to start on the next phase of the project. At least, theoretically, I am ready. I seem to have some thing going on here, so my face is all swollen and I sound like poop, but you know, we carry on. All right, so I have my putty knife and I'm not 100% certain if there's like a science to this. I'm just kinda gonna put it on there and try to make it look pretty. I wish that I had some place to like practice, but I don't. Okay, so I have my big ol' putty knife thingy, whatever this is, joint knife, and this thing is so heavy, guys, so heavy. If I can get it open, my goodness. I know it's probably like this because they don't want it coming out in transport, but good lord. Okay, are you ready? So, let us see. I don't think you want it like super thick. You probably don't want it all over your fingers either. My goodness. So instead of putting it everywhere, I'm now trying to just get it mainly in the areas where I want the bricks. That way the tape will be easier for me to see, to pull off. And also I think that it'll make them look more like separate bricks. We'll see, it's a theory I'm working on here. I just kind of go in where the tape is and then let up, round it off and then go back where the tape is, round it off.
getting towards the end of this wall. Super exciting. Um, and then I'm going to get to pull the tape and that's going to be so satisfying. But I thought that I would show you like the technique that I have come to believe is the best way to do this. So basically you want to skim coat the wall in entirety to where you can't see the tape. So do a section, just cover it. Make sure to get in to all the little holes here. And then go back in where you know the tape is and scrape and then let up and kind of round it off. Scrape, let up and round it off. Scrape, let up and then round it off. And you don't wanna push down too hard because you don't wanna take the tape off the wall. So you're really just trying to scrape to find the edges. You wanna find the top and the bottom of the tape so that you can round off the top and the bottom because that is what is gonna give it that really organic brick look. I, I have a feeling that if I were to just take the tape off that it would be very square and that's not the look that I'm wanting. I'm trying to avoid the square look basically. If you don't mind the square look, then I'm sure that it doesn't matter, but this is just how I'm personally doing it. So we shall see how this turns out. I'm thinking that it's gonna look pretty convincing for brick. Now for the very messy process of taking the tape off. So let's see how this goes. I have a trash can right here for all of the mess. comes off where it's going to, I guess. Definitely do not be wearing clothes that you care about in this process. Ah. And I guess I will be doing some work touching up. Goodness, this is all water soluble, so it's okay if you do get it on yourself, it'll wash off. gorgeous and I'm definitely once I paint this I could be fooled that it was brick yeah you tell me what you think in the comments of this entire process so today is painting day but before we can paint we actually have to do a little bit of prep work I want to show you the the faux brick is finally dry completely and I just wanted to show you like what to expect when you do this project as you can see there was a bit of cracking and that's because of the natural drying process but actually it it works perfectly fine with the brick look so I'm actually not upset about it at all. I could go back in and fill it in with more joint compound with my fingers like I did in my fireplace in my dining room, but I don't want to. I think that it kind of actually helps with the appearance of the brick. So I'm actually okay with it completely. Maybe you can see more of the cracking up here. You can see some of the cracking up here, but like I said, it really doesn't affect it at all. I think that it actually adds to the authenticity of the brick. It, it looks more brick-like that way. So the only thing that I am going to do with the brick is there are some harsh corners in here that are quite pokey. And I know when I try to paint over them, they're gonna break off into the paintbrush and I don't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to use a 120 grit sander and try to sand them down just a little bit, just to round them off a bit. So, like just, it gives it a much more worn, soft look. 
which I actually really like. So let's just look at a before and an after here. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like before and then what it looks like after. See this harsh edge right here? You just take this. And see, it's much more worn looking. So I think that looks better. If you like, again, if you like the other look, that's totally fine too. I just like this look better. Lord. I'm done. Woo! That took a little bit. Look at my poor sanding pad. It is very sad, but I'm happy to have it done. So now, now I'm gonna get a broom and my wet dry vac, and I'm gonna come in here and suck it all off the walls. Maybe I should clean my hands first. I'm literally getting drywall dust. Look at my face. Is it all over me? Maybe. All right, let's get to it. So now that it's all cleaned up, the next thing to do is to tape off the few areas that I just wanna be sure don't get paint on them. I'm gonna tape around the door itself, around the hinges, and on the flooring. Well, yeah, on the flooring, because it will cause me less work later on. So I'm gonna go and get my painter's tape and we will get ahead on that. I'm actually gonna try to use these pieces. We are taped, we are cleaned, we are sanded, we are prepped. So now it's time for paint. All right, I just finished the second coat and now I'm going to pull off the tape. Okay, I didn't do such a great job taping, so there's going to be a little bit of touch-ups to do on the doors, but whatever, that's fine. Um, other than that, it's looking pretty spectacular. I have a little bit of cleanup, but really, for the most part, the walls are done and I am so excited about it. And as you can see, it made a huge difference on these walls, just painting it white. You can see the beautiful brick pattern and the texture, but it just unifies the whole space and this entryway is so much brighter than it was. So other than that, yeah. This dresser, I love this dresser, not getting rid of it, but it does need a makeover <laughs> terribly. When I first purchased it, it, it was in pretty bad shape. I had to do quite a few repairs. And so because I had to use Bondo on it, I decided to just paint it. And now I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if it was as bad as I thought back then. And I'm gonna try to strip it down and see if I can just leave parts of it wood like I did with the antique server. Because if I can, I would really love that to bring in some nice, warm wood tones into this space and then paint some of it that dark iron ore color 
to bring in some of that moody feel to the space. So let's just get straight into the process. I'm excited to share it with you. I was all set to start on this dresser. And I was getting all prepared. I cleaned up the entire space. And then I realized that I have like this much left of the citrus strip. <sighs> so I'm gonna make a quick trip into my local Home Depot and pick some up. So I'll be right back. Okay, that wasn't exactly right back. But I got me some citrus strip and the pants that I am planning on doing is called limousine leather. Straight up black. There's no if, ands, or buts with that color. Okay, let's get into this. I better take my husband's hoodie off because he will not be happy if I get citrus strip on it. Before we actually begin, I should probably start by taking all the things out. <laughs> Here's a cute tip, cute. Here's a short tip, small tip, a very, very valuable tip. If you happen to get an older piece of furniture that has the hole in the back, like sometimes they get worn out over the years. If you use a washer, it can help it from like going in to the dresser drawer. So that's a small tip. And also if you happen to get screws that are too long, again, you can use a washer and it helps make it fit snugly. So I'm gonna put all of these into a sandwich bag and put them away so that they do not get lost. It is already starting to work. You can kind of see the bubbling. So you can see the bubbling starting to happen and that is a good sign that I'm just going to, I'm gonna let it continue to work for probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 more minutes I'm gonna put it on. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to start on my drawers. All right, let us see how easy it comes off. what I can off with just the initial stripping process. So now I'm gonna actually scrub it with soap and water and a scrubby and see how much more I can get off. That was a lot of hard work. <laughs> Probably like two hours worth at least. So I almost got it down to what exactly it was before I painted it. I think I'm paying penance for needing that quick win. Also, you know, I feel like certain seasons of our lives just require um, simpler solutions. And the simple solution was to just paint this dresser with some chalk paint. It's just gonna require a little bit of touch up here and there. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Now comes the super mundane part of sitting here and trying to scrape all the stuff out of the tiny little cracks. Uh, but I do realize I did this to myself. So.
point where I'm like, this is crazy. How many hours am I going to spend scraping paint out of tiny little itsy bitsy areas? Probably to get to the end of it and still have to paint it because, I mean, look at this. Uh, I have to clean it up because I can't paint it without cleaning it up first. But there's probably no way I'm going to be able to stain this. How much mess do you think this will make? <laughs> I'm sending this direction, so hopefully this is where it stays. I don't know about that though. Better take off my husband's hoodie before he throws a fit. hard work or maybe my definition of hard is different than most people's but it's not hard work like it's not hard to do like super complex or anything like that it's just a lot sometimes but I don't even words I don't I don't know I'm so like tired already <laughs> and it's not even what like it's one o'clock in the afternoon what, what time is it 12 it's not even one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm like can I go back to bed now? Oh my. Okay, it's the old finish. It's literally gumming up all of my sand sanding pads. And so in the interest of saving myself time and money going through a lot of sanding pads, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do another strip. When in doubt, move a step back and try again. I thought I was recording that whole time, apparently not. So <laughs> I switched gears and now I'm working on the drawers while this gets ready for me to strip that last little bit of the original finish that is being so stubborn to come off. So it is beautiful, but it cannot stay this way because of the sheer damage to the veneer. And here's the problem with that. Like I could glue it up, but then um, stain wouldn't stick on it. And then I could also um, paint that part if I wanted to. But here's the real issue. Leaving the veneer chipped like that is actually, it's actually asking for more damage down the road because when veneer, like when there's an in to get into the veneer like that, more and more of it is going to break off over time and use. So I wanna prevent it from that ha from happening. No additional damage happening to the piece. And now we wait until it turns completely white and then I'll show you how am I going to fix it from there. formulating a plan here. The whole top, this whole top will have to be painted because um, there's a whole section here. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. You can see it right there. All of that white paint stuck in the grain there, right there. And there's no way for me to get it out. So I'm going to paint the top black. When considering the drawers, however, I came up with a plan. I took a piece of 80 pound cardstock. I love making my own transfers and tracings. So I took a piece of 80 pound cardstock and I traced the back of this 
lovely design right here and this is what it came out with and then I did again I did that but I, I folded it in half first to make this so this is what's going to be on my drawer fronts I'm gonna go get my painters tape and let's start taping out this dresser This drawer is ready and I'm gonna tape off everything before I get my paint ready because once my paint is ready I'm gonna want to just paint so I'm gonna paint tape all the drawers and then paint them all I'm gonna leave this unpainted so I'm not actually gonna tape this one I'm just gonna be very careful when I get around here I'm probably gonna take a detail brush and do that because that would take me like 50 hours to tape around that tiny little stuff. mostly dry already but I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit a little bit longer and while those are drying I'm gonna go ahead and do a second coat on the top so while I have it wet from the second coat I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off a good line so I just did a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper so I just did a very light scuff sand on the very top and then I wiped it down with a damp rag and that just smooths it down really well just makes it really smooth looking so that's what I'm doing with the rest of them
it is absolutely beautiful I am very happy with how it turned out I was able to modernize it just a tiny bit so just adding in this detail right here just gave it a little bit more of a modern feel I could have just left that drawer open and I could have left those completely black, but I feel like it would have been very plain. And I think this beautiful piece deserved a little bit more than that. So I'm really happy that my brain thought of that <laughs> just out of nowhere. I just have those like epiphany moments where I'm like, aha, painting the tile, guys. Yes, I'm finally gonna do it. I'm so excited that I'm getting to try out the process on a smaller patch of tile. I would have to say that this area is probably four foot by six foot maybe. So super small, perfect for a project that I've never done before and am slightly overwhelmed by the thought of it. But I have seen other people do it and they had great success. Mary from the White Cottage Co. actually painted her tile in her bathroom, which was one of my main inspirations for this. I wanted to do it before that, but seeing her do it and then seeing now years later after the fact and it's still holding up really beautifully has given me lots of hope. So I am actually looking at some of my inspirations I have found from um, all over the place, magazines, books, some of my favorite decorating books, um, also from Miss Mustard Seed, she painted her hardwood floor in her workroom, a checkered tile type thing. And I love that look. I think it's so classic and timeless. And so that's what I'm gonna try on this floor, a lighter color and a darker color in like a checkered pattern. I don't know how it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it out. Also, I'm gonna purchase a new rug to go on top of this ugly black one. This black one, it's not pretty. So I would like to put something pretty here that has a little bit of color in it. Today, I'm going to take you on the entire task <laughs> of painting my entryway tile. And this was a fun project and I wanna get right into it. I am standing on it right now and I have laid my new rug down, which I'm not gonna show you. No spoilers for the next videos coming up, but it actually turned out really well. And after living with it, I, it's growing on me. So <laughs> just a prequel to what you're about to, to experience. Today is the day I am finally going to start tackling this entryway flooring, the tile over here. I am going to be painting it today. Well, at least I'm starting. So to get right into it, it is an intimidating process, not only because I have never painted tile before, but also because um, obviously there are differing reviews on the product that I'm using. So some people say it works really awesomely. Other people say that after a year or so it started chipping and whatever. I'm also going to be using different top coat than what goes with this product. I'm using Rust-Oleum tile floor paint and that's for the colors. And then I'm actually going to be using polycrylic to seal it. And I'm going to do several coats of that. What is the first step? Well, the first step is to clean the floor really, really well. I have mixed <laughs> some warm water with some dish Dawn detergent and some of my homemade cleaner, which is vinegar and lemons that have fermented in the vinegar. So it's super powerful. Surely it will degrease the flooring. So that's my first step is to clean, scrape everything off of the surface and then just scrub it really well and then let it dry thoroughly. And thankfully it's warm outside. So I'm just gonna open up the door and let the entire area dry thoroughly before I start in. But then after I clean it, I'm gonna have to tape off the area. So let's get started in the project. I'm excited to get it over with basically because um, it's just nerve wracking. So I just can't wait to be done with it. And I hope that it turns out well, so we shall see. All right, the floor is officially dry. All right, no turning back now. Well, I mean, there could be, but I'm not going to, so. I'm in it to win it, guys. That is one coat. It is definitely not one coat coverage. I can tell you that right now. So I got the second coat on last night and it's looking pretty good. Now I am on to taping off the checker squares for the next color.
here's gonna be the tricky part. I'm gonna get paint those areas without getting any more dirt and stuff. On the other spots, I just got the second coat down and I decided to do it with a brush versus the roller just because it was quicker and less cleanup and it looks pretty good. It self evens pretty well so you don't see any brush strokes or at least I'm not at this time. So at this point I'm going to take the tape off. So I did all the little touch-ups. It really wasn't much. It was just a little bit. I took a little paintbrush and just did a few touch-ups, but overall it really didn't need a lot. It's taking a bit of an adjustment <laughs> for me. Well, obviously it's a big difference from what it was before, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not as I was imagining it, I guess. All I can do is try my best and see what happens. It's not the end of the world if I decide I don't like it, but honestly, I don't hate it, so. <laughs> and it was a lot of work, so I'm just gonna go with it. I should be able to get all of the coats in today and then let it sit until tomorrow and we shall see what it looks like. So, so I ended up doing three total coats. I don't know if I'll do another one. Maybe, we'll see. I may just let it dry for the 24 hour period and then see how it holds up because it will have a rug over the top of it. So they remind me a lot of, I don't know why, just the Wonderland, the Alice in Wonderland because they're a little bit weird. <laughs> I think I would have been better if I'd have gone with the dark gray and a white, but you know, I'm kind of terrified of white, but I am happy to be done with this process. It was quite an interesting process. Actually, it really wasn't all that hard. <laughs> Not the most convenient, but that's also because this is my entryway. I also have a wardrobe over here that was a trade-off from my parents and this is more of a i would have to say art deco style so really not in my style i wouldn't say it's more towards mid-century than it is toward the more victorian victorian ornate type of look so i'm gonna try to change that i don't want to paint it all no i don't i'm gonna refinish the wood on most of it, but I'm thinking that the door frame, like the door itself is going to be painted. And then I'm actually going to build a topper for on top of the door to give it a more elegant, to give it a more elegant curve shape at the top to make it look faux Victorian. I have the last piece here and we are going to start and finish this little baby makeover an upcycling, if you will, of this beautiful vintage wardrobe. This is an English style. And unfortunately, when this was purchased at some point during its lifetime, the other half of this wardrobe was, I don't know if it was damaged and then thrown away or if it was just not included in the sale because they were using it somewhere else. But this is actually only half of the wardrobe. It is supposed to be sitting on top of a very large drawer that has feet underneath. And because it's half of it, it's really short in comparison to what it's supposed to be. So it's kind of awkward. It's also not 100% my style and it could use a refinishing. Never fear, I am not painting it or at least not painting it in the traditional sense like you would expect. I am going to be refinishing it, however. So let us get straight into the process. I have some inspiration photos, which I will place on the screen for you so that you kind of get an idea of where I'm hoping to take it. I don't know if I'll make it there, however. So we'll just let the process flow and see what we come up with. I'm making quite the mess.
I'm just gonna do the best that I can, scrubbing off what's here and scraping what little is left that I can get off, and then what I can't get off will be taken off with sandpaper. All right, I'm finishing up day one of work. I got everything scraped. Obviously the door will still need to be done, but I'm gonna take it off for that and that will be maybe tomorrow's project. We'll see. I might be building the base tomorrow. Maybe I can do both, who knows. got these I'm assuming what were at some point some kind of stability system for when it had its like was in its base either that or somebody made made these feet <laughs> I, not quite what I would call feet but they're gonna be in my way all right got those makeshift feet off now it comes down to I measured it out for exactly where these need to go and I'm creating obviously an entire base that will connect with pocket jig screw holes I had some two by fours that I cut down with my table saw and then I sanded them really smooth and then I used my Craig jig to make the holes so this is just one of the sides and then it just sits like this more braces for the bottom of this but I can't do it because it's nighttime obviously so I want to actually cut braces let's get it put up on its feet and see how sturdy it feels if it needs the extra bracing because it's actually not that heavy of a wet wardrobe so it may not actually need the extra bracing looking pretty good. Um, I may not need the extra bracing. Oh my goodness. Okay. That was a lot. Now I'm gonna freshly wipe it all down with a very mildly damp rag and then I'm gonna let it sit and then I'm going to stain it. Time to work on the door while this dries. I spared you. <laughs> me taking off the rest of the hardware. I have special plans for the door. I have some ideas, but I'm not 100% on any of them. So there it is, completely stained. We can get a little bit closer look of it. It is beautiful. It took the stain pretty beautifully. I'm very happy with it. Um, we're gonna work on the door. I got it completely sanded. So it's got pretty like lighter color wood. I'm not really 
really sure what kind of what this is. The thing I love about these types of projects is that I get an opportunity to test some new skills or to work on and practice some new skills. And it's not such a big deal if it doesn't turn out perfectly. I'm sure that it's going to be beautiful. Even if it doesn't end up looking like something that fits in my house, I'm probably gonna sell it because it doesn't function well for us. It's too small. So it gives me an opportunity to make it into something that I think makes it better and do a little bit of design work, which is really fun for me. Okay, let me show you what I've been up to. I cut a piece of wood, the same size as the top here. I went online and I found a fancy top to a wardrobe and I'm going to attempt to cut it out with my jigsaw. So what I actually did was I measured half of what the board is and I got myself some cardstock. I printed out the picture as close to that size as I could using Canva and I got basically this. I had to adjust it a bit and then I cut this out. So then I just traced it out onto here and that is what it looks like so far. Just like that. So in theory, it'll look like that on the top here. That's, that's the theory that I'm working with. <laughs> it is not so simple to cut out shapes like that with a jigsaw. So I'm gonna have to go really slow and um, really take my time with it basically. So I'm just gonna use some of the dark gray paint that I turned into chalk paint, <laughs> if I can get it open. So I used my Craig jig and I made the holes to attach this to the top and I have my screws. I have sanded it flush and then I'm using wood putty, actual wood putty. We'll see how I like it. I don't know. I've not usually been a fan of it, but it's on a case to case basis. So we'll just try it out and see. I decided while I am waiting, I'm going to go ahead and paint the base. It did not turn out stained anywhere near the rest of it. So I'm not going to leave it as is. I'm going to paint it. a second coat just in the front and I'm thinking the rest of it will probably need a second coat. It is completely sanded clean and it is ready. I need to get some painter's tape and just tape this edge off because I'm only going to be painting the top. Well my camera got unplugged so I wonder how much you got. I don't know. There it is completely painted and I think it looks really good. I'm going to attempt to stain the door now. So it's laying on my coffee table in my very dirty living room and I'm not going to clean it specifically for this video. I'll probably clean it after the video, which makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And I ruined my last gloves, so. <laughs>
bet you didn't think it was possible to turn an art deco wardrobe into a Swedish folk art wardrobe <laughs> with some French accents. <laughs> Um, I worried about it there for a while too. Might actually want to record this. Yeah. Well, that was kind of crappy. I uh, learned the hard way that um, polycrylic, when you brush it too many times on over the other paint, starts to pull that paint into the polycrylic. So when applying polycrylic on top of painted wood, you have to be super careful and apply, like use as few brush strokes as possible and make sure to really wet your brush with the polycrylic when you're going over it. So it kind of just coats over the top of it instead of pulling on it. So that sucks. It was perfect. And now it's just slightly less perfect. And of course that bothers me. <laughs> oh my goodness, my arms are killing me. My hands are cramping from all the things. Oh my goodness. You know, I used to have much more feminine hands before I started doing all this work. And um, yeah, I have very manly hands now because they're used to hard work now. No more of just piano playing. <laughs> Now we're down to the nitty gritty, taking a razor blade to the mirror to take off all of the paint and other stuff that got onto it and then cleaning it really well. So I'm gonna do that first and then we're gonna get to put the hardware back on. I'm so excited, oh my gosh. <sighs> wow. I just got the handle back on, super pretty handle and it opens in a really cool way and I'll show you that later. It is complete. Look at that, complete is the handle. This handle is super cool. You actually twist it to unlock it. So, very neat. It's a, one of those charms of older furniture that you will not find in newer furniture. The process was, I mean, it seemed like it was going to be simple. They always do. But when it comes down to it, I added a lot to this wardrobe, not just the base. The base would have been simple all on its own. But I added the base and then I added the crown to the top and then I added all of the hand painted goodness to the whole door. It is absolutely incredible, one of a kind. You will never find another one like this piece. So, oh my goodness, you can do this. You can take a piece of furniture that you don't love and turn it into something spectacular. It just takes a little bit of creativity, some time, some problem solving, and really very few supplies. There wasn't a whole lot that I needed. I mean, you watch the entire process. I won't go step by step for everything, but it really was just a lot of small projects. And I'm finding that that is the truth with pretty much everything in this house. It is a culmination of a lot of really small projects, all rolled into one to make one giant impact wall decor slash art and a mirror makeover. I don't think this mirror is staying here. It's always kind of weird because I have this detail up here on the dresser. And so trying to put a mirror there, I don't know. It just always looks weird. But I do have a mirror that I purchased at a thrift store for $5 that is painted and I'm gonna strip the paint off of it and refinish the mirror. So I'm excited about that. And I'm thinking that that mirror is going to look beautiful in this space right here. I also have some beautiful pieces of art that I am contemplating putting over here. I don't know, or over here. Like I wanna bring in some more beauty to this space. I have this piece over here on this wall that I actually made out of a crappy frame and I made that and I really love it, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I wanna do there. I may just take it down and try to figure something else out. My husband uses it all the time though, so he may not like it if I do that. Maybe I'll just repaint it. 
we'll have to see. And that will be probably towards the end when I get to the really fun part of decorating the entire space. I just kind of leaned into the Sunday, but I feel the need to be productive and I want to get a start on some smaller projects for my entryway. So I want to work on the mirror. Look how pretty this is. Look at this. I bought this for $5, I think. It's basically going to be used to brighten up the space, to reflect light, and if you need a quick look at your appearance before you walk out the door, basically. Well, I have it set up here on my coffee table, and I just put down some craft paper, and I taped it down really well so that it's not moving anywhere. And I have my citrus strip and my little two-inch angled brush by Wooster. These side brackets actually come off, so I'm thinking I'm gonna take those off first. this hardware is going to have to be stripped as well. So I'll just put this in some boiling vinegar and see what comes off. And I may have to use a metal scraper because they have quite a bit of varnish on them. That off to the side. Okay. Now we can actually do the stripping. Okay, now I'm gonna put my timer on for between 20 and 30 minutes and see what we can get off. All right, I am to the point where I can now start scrubbing the remainder of this stuff off. I'm at the point where I'm going to reinstall the side brackets. And I went ahead and I scrubbed them really clean and then I used some rub and buff on them. So they look pretty. So I'm just going to reinstall them with the very annoying flathead screws that they came with. All right, let's install it. And ta-da. Okay, so the first step when you want to replace a light fixture is obviously to uninstall the one that's already there. And now that is ready for me to install the new light, but the new light actually needs a little bit of work. Okay, here is the new light and it is actually missing the ground wire. It needs to be cleaned up and I think I'm gonna use rub and buff on the metal itself to kind of give it some new life. It looks a little bit rusted in some areas, so I'm gonna scrub it really well, dry it really well, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of rub and buff. Like, look at this. It's rusted, so it needs to be cleaned. Okie dokie. I'm gonna have to use some pliers for that. Let's get started on, see if I can take this off and then we're gonna clean the globe really well. I have managed to take it completely apart. So I have these two pieces now that are all by themselves, no electronics in them. So they are safe to take to the sink and scrub down probably with some barkeeper's friend and a scouring pad and then dry it really well. So I'm gonna go do that. A very exciting time. So before I can install the light fixture, which is all put back together, cleaned and ready for installation, I even tested it. But before I can do that, I actually have to deal with this first, my plastic ceiling medallion. I already tested it out to make sure that the size looks good for the area and the hole fits properly for my light fixture. You wanna make sure that it covers up the hole properly but that the little, you can get it to install it and all of that stuff fits. So you wanna make sure to get the right one. So I'm just gonna give it two quick coats. So 
also the electrical box is not flush to the ceiling so that it, this thing is not sitting correctly. So I'm gonna have to go get my drill and see if we can tighten it up there. So the issue is that the drywall is right up snug with the electrical box. So I'm actually gonna need to cut away some of it to get the box to go up even more. ginormous mess for the moment. I have these two antique frames and I wanted to use them for my entryway. This one unfortunately dropped while I was trying to fit it and it sustained some damage. I think I'm gonna try to come in with some brown paint to fix it, but otherwise they are beautiful old frames. However, I have nothing that can fit in these frames. I even tried purchasing from Hobby Lobby some oval canvases but they were just slightly too big, so that didn't work. So I got thought to myself, well, I guess I'm gonna have to make them. <laughs> so I had some hard board in my stash, in my shed, and I just traced around this on the hard board, and then I used my Dremel tool to cut it out. And it did require a little bit of finagling and I had to sand down the sides with my Orbo. But other than that, it only fits in one particular way because it's obviously not symmetrical. So there's that. But the first thing requires that I have a backer board of some sort to go in here. So this one is finished and I obviously did not realize how in depth this is. I wasn't really thinking it through. All right, so I have this one left. I think I'm gonna put this down just as a safety board. It does take several passes to cut this out. Um, so, you know, it's just gonna take a bit. And you will want to wear your goggles. I didn't with the first one and uh, uh, got dust in my eyes, so. All right, well, it looks like I used up the last of that. So I guess I will be going out to my saw. At least I am left with the straight cuts. All right, I got them both done. There's one. And here's two. And that is just the first part of the project. where I would like to hang my beautiful pieces of art. I made my holes with my nails already initially, so I know exactly where I want them to go. It's just a matter of putting them in the wall. Probably not a recommended use for the uh, back end of a battery, but it seems to work pretty well for me, so. I think they look beautiful and I am really loving what they add to this space. I also have an idea to add these lovely hangers. They're cast iron hangers that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I was thinking that I was going to coat them in something, but now I don't think that I will do that. I think that I like them just cast iron. And I just wanna have them like right here so that I can hang my purse. My husband can hang his keys or something right there on the hooks. And it's just a perfect place to put them. So I think I'm gonna mark my spot for these and go ahead and drill them in at the same time. Perfect. Honestly, I think it's these little touches that make all the difference in the world. 
when it comes to spaces. Looking and feeling like they belong to us and like they're a part of us and they represent us and our styles. So don't be afraid to be kind of nitpicky with your space. Try things out. I mean, you have nothing to lose. One more project down. I'm loving it. All right, one of the last things that I need to do is caulk around the ceiling medallion. And because my ceiling is so uneven, I am having to put in a lot more caulk on this side. And I might have to let it dry and then come back in with more. So I'm glad that nobody's gonna be like looking at the ceiling very well because leftover phew all right one more thing checked off the list so I hope that you enjoyed watching all of those small projects. I'm sorry that I couldn't go into as good of detail as I wanted to on some of the projects simply because of my back issues and me having to just kind of get through them because I was in a lot of pain. But I'm happy to have them finished and I hope that you enjoyed watching the transformation happen with just small things. It's just a culmination of really small projects or big projects rather. The big project on the walls being the fake brick was actually one of the most fun. I really didn't mind the work and I think that it it just had a dramatic impact on this space. The paint obviously too. Painting the doors was wonderful. I still need to do touch-ups on those but I think I'm gonna wait until the weather is better and then just take them off and take them outside and do a better job of it. Painting the floor was a really big project and it made a really big impact and I really like it and it's holding up fairly well. Another one was the two furniture projects that I had this dresser is just absolutely gorgeous and then also this wardrobe to my side here then it's just pulling the space together with the tiny projects like the mirror that I absolutely love I think it is perfect in in this space it's just like it was just waiting there for me and I added my snake plant because I really don't think that the space needs a ton it's just something to brighten up the space my artwork which I'm gonna be going into more detail on that entire process as well as a fun kind of example slash experiment of how we can take art prints inexpensive art prints and make them look like actual paintings. So that video is going to be coming up. I actually have several more frames that I want to do it to as well. So we're going to have fun with that. Um, just adding those couple of little decorative cast iron hooks are actually from Hobby Lobby if you're interested in them. I have had them for years, years, and I didn't know what I was going to do with them, but I thought that they were beautiful and they were only like three dollars a piece so very inexpensive and it gives my husband a place to put his keys now that I have taken away his little wall hanger thingy so anyway thank you so much guys for watching all the way through if you've made it this far don't forget to like the video if this is content that inspires you and ideas and entertains you a little bit maybe even and if you are not yet subscribed go ahead and subscribe I would love to have you and that's a wrap guys <laughs>